Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. I'm so excited to have something new to share with you today. Over the past month or so, I've been doing a decent amount of painting, just kind of exploring with some things and trying to reconnect with what I love about my art. Today I want to share with you the process for one of these paintings, specifically this one here, and I want to talk to you about how I have been loosening up with my painting and just some of the adjustments I've been making in how I create art art and what's been really working for me and some things I've been really excited about. We're going to start with a part of the process that I don't normally share with you guys. It's kind of hard to film, I've talked about it before, but we're going to start with the warming up. I thought it would be cool to walk you through the entire process from start to finish and it doesn't actually start with the actual painting itself. I've been trying to work in more warm-up time before a painting because I usually am happier with the end result. So I just grabbed some random reference photo on Pinterest that I liked and started sketching. The idea here isn't to create a perfect sketch, it's just to get my mind thinking in that creative way. So I'm starting to think about the proportions of the head and of the figure in general. I'm thinking about values and shape language and the silhouette of things, and it's just a good way to get my brain working in that way. Warming up is also really important for becoming more confident before I actually start painting, so instead of starting super hesitantly when I get to the final piece, by warming up I know that I've already kind of spent some time laying down paint or scratching out a sketch, and I can move into my final piece with a bit more confidence, less hesitation, and ultimately be happier with the final result. So these are just a couple little sketches that I did in my sketchbook, which you guys probably saw, I think in the live stream I probably showed it to you. This is just a sketchbook that I made out of Canson XL mixed media paper, which I really like for sketching because it's relatively smooth and it's good for laying in loose washes of watercolor. The paper does warp a decent amount with water, so it's not perfect, especially for finished pieces, and it does lift in layers, but it's a lot of fun for stuff like this. Here's the sketch for my final piece. I actually wasn't super happy with this sketch itself. I didn't use any kind of reference. I wanted to just experiment with how I visualized some of the features of the face in my mind. And I also didn't wanna work too hard on getting the sketch perfect, which kind of leads me into the second thing I've been learning. If the first tip or point would be warming up, then the second would be sketch work versus paint work. And what I mean by that is you need a firm sketch, especially when you want to be painting loosely, which is what I want to do here. So you need a solid sketch because if you don't have a solid sketch, then you're not going to be happy with what you put on top of it. But at the same time, I don't need all of the work to be done in the sketching phase. I don't need to know exactly where every detail is going to go before I start painting. I can work that out while I paint. And I know that this process doesn't necessarily work for every artist because some people want to know exactly where they're going the entire, the entire process of painting. But I've been learning a lot about myself and I've been learning that I want each painting to kind of be an adventure and to be exploring and learning. And making that shift in my mindset has been really, really helpful for me instead of thinking of needing each piece to be perfect and to be a you know, peak representation of my skill as an artist or anything like that. I've just been trying to think about learning at least one new thing with each piece. So when it came to the inspiration for this particular piece, I knew that I wanted to use Cerulean Blue. I think I had maybe watched one of Tori's videos, who's Juicy Ink here on YouTube. She put up a video of something where she wanted to use Cerulean Blue, so I was like, oh, I like Cerulean Blue, and I used to use it a lot more, especially mixed with some browns, and I just wanted to experiment with that some more. So this piece was kind of inspired by that, even though there's only a little bit of pops of cerulean blue in this piece, it was my primary blue for the entire painting. I'll talk more about my specific colors that I use towards the end. 
At this point, there are lots of subtle shifts in color on this painting, and it kind of leads me into the next thing I've been learning. I've been trying to think less about using specific colors in my painting, and just think about the overall piece in variations of value and temperature. So instead of going, I want this to be blue, I want this to be purple, and I want this to be red, I've been trying to think that, oh, I want this corner of the eye to be warmer than the iris, or I want this section of the head to be cooler than this other part, and then just making shifts in temperature. So when I'm laying down my first few layers, I'm thinking mostly about shifts in color temperature. So spots where I want to be warmer, I'll add more red and maybe a little bit more yellow. Spots where I want to be cooler, I'll add more blue to that mix. The cerulean blue is a very heavily granulating blue, and the White Knights version is very light as far as tinting strength, so it was something to play around with and kind of learn through. When I'm first getting started, especially when I want my painting to be looser, I'm thinking in terms of, like I said, color temperature and the changes there and also in value so thinking about areas where i want to be the lightest places i want to be the darkest and it becomes less about using specific colors and more about making all of those pieces fit together i've also been having a lot of fun with i guess my fourth point which is focal points and kind of allowing just a couple of parts of the painting to be the most developed and the most detailed, as opposed to having it equally balanced. So in this particular painting, I want to reserve just a couple of places to have the greatest amount of detail or to be the most fleshed out. So the eye that is closest to the viewer, I wanted that to have the most contrast. So that has the deepest dark values, the closest to black, but it also has the lightest highlights. I ended up going in with white gouache towards the end to make that area have a lot of contrast. So we have a lot of dark values and we have a lot of light values there. And just kind of allowing everything else to fade into the background. There's a little bit of detail around the nose and the mouth, but everything else is just very fluid. And I feel like it gives the rest of the painting a bit of life and a bit of energy without things feeling really rigid because everything is super detailed. So while I started working with big messy strokes to lay in those to lay in those bits of color, you can see that by this point I was working a lot more hesitantly, doing tiny little adjustments in smaller spaces to bring out the areas where I wanted there to be the most focus. And that's been a lot of fun for me, balancing out those areas and allowing some other places to just be messy. It doesn't matter that that ear that's not really there is just kind of a swipe of red and the neck isn't very well defined, neither is the top of the head. It doesn't need to be. It can be loose because it draws the eye in to areas firstly with higher contrast which we talked about but also areas with higher saturation so contrast and saturation are kind of the two biggest ways to draw in an area as a focal point. Oh boy, so lots of things to talk about in this video. My goals moving forward as far as video content on the channel goes, I want to share more art with you guys. I want to share more of my process, more of my thoughts on creating art and how I paint certain things, how I draw certain things. I thought it could be fun to do a series on limited palettes, so shifting different palettes and seeing what colors we can get from them, creating a piece with those. The primary colors that I used to create this piece from my White Knight set were this Cadmium Red Light, Cerulean Blue, which we've talked about a bit, and Naples Yellow. 
The red and the yellow are very common colors that I use, especially for my, this set, they're the ones I use the most. I also use a little bit of Quinn Gold to get those really, really rich warm colors, and a little bit of this Payne's Gray to get my purples a little bit more purpley, as well as a tiny, tiny bit of some of the cool reds, just to add some variation, because the purple you can mix from Cad Red Light and Cerulean Blue is very limited. I'm excited to get back to just kind of creating more art on the channel and talking with you guys about that. So I hope you guys are excited about it too. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to watch this video. The original is for sale on my shop. You can find a link down in the description, as well as all of the materials that I use to create this painting. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye!